Hi everybody, in this video we're going to be looking at transformations of quadratic graphs. Transformations of quadratic graphs are also known as turning point form. And the general rule for the turning point form of the quadratic is y is equal to a times x minus h in a bracket squared plus k. First of all, let's look at the basic graph of y is equal to x squared. The shape that you can see here in this graph is known as a parabola. And we spell that P-A-R-A-B-O-L-A. -A. This parabola is an upright parabola, which means it is the right way up. And we can see that we have a very important point down here, which is the turning point of the graph. It's located at the point 0, 0, or the origin. And because the graph is upright, we say that this point is a minimum turning point. It's seen as a minimum turning point because as the graph goes down to 0, 0, it is decreasing. This is its minimum value, and then it starts increasing again. So it's known as a minimum turning point. Now, this is the graph of the basic parabola, but there are three important things that can happen to this parabola which will transform it. One is called a dilation. The second one is called a reflection. And the third one is called a translation. We're going to look at all three now. First of all, let's look at a dilation. When the graph is dilated, we are looking at the number in front of the x squared in the rule. In general, we call this value a. So we're looking at the rule as a times x squared. When the value of this number a is greater than 1, the parabola will become narrower or closer to the y-axis. For example, y is equal to 2x squared. a here is equal to 2. 2 is greater than 1. So therefore, this graph will be narrower than the basic graph of y is equal to x squared. When a is between 0 and 1, the parabola will become wider or closer to the x-axis. For example, the graph of y is equal to 1 quarter of x squared. In this case, a is equal to 1 quarter. 1 quarter is between 0 and 1. So this graph will be narrower than the basic y is equal to x squared graph. It will be, no it won't, it will be wider than the basic y is equal to x squared graph. It will be closer to the x-axis. The turning point will not change. It will stay the same as the turning point in the basic graph. In other words, the turning point will still be at the point 0, 0. We call this the invariant point. Let's look now at these three graphs together. The purple graph is y is equal to x squared. The black graph is 2x squared. We can see how this graph is narrower than the purple graph. It is closer to the y-axis. The red graph is y is equal to 1 quarter x squared. We can see that this graph is much wider than the basic y is equal to x squared graph. It's closer to the x-axis. Now let's look at translations and first of all a horizontal translation. You can see the general rule there and when the value of h changes the graph will move h units to the left or the right. 
For example, y is equal to x minus 2 in a bracket squared. This whole graph will move two units to the right. So this minus 2 value here will cause the basic graph to move to the right two units. It actually moves in the direction opposite to what you would instinctively think. Minus 2 may make you think that it's going to move to the left, but no, it moves in the opposite direction. It moves to the right. In the graph of y is equal to x plus 5 squared, the whole graph will move 5 units to the left. Again, the plus 5 here might make you think that it's going to move to the right, but it moves in the opposite direction to what you would think. It moves 5 units to the left. Again, let's look at the three graphs together. The purple graph is the basic graph of y is equal to x squared with its turning point at 0, 0. The green graph is y is equal to x plus 5 squared. You can see by looking at its turning point that it has moved to the left by 5 units so that its turning point is now at negative 5, 0. The blue graph is the graph of y is equal to x minus 2 squared. You can see here that the turning point of this graph has moved 2 units to the right and the turning point is now at 2, 0. Now let's look at vertical translations. Again, you can see the general rule there. Now. When the value of k changes, the graph will move c units up or down. For example, in the rule y is equal to x squared plus 5, this graph will move 5 units up from 0, 0. So when we add plus 5 to y is equal to x squared, it moves the entire graph 5 units up. In the graph y is equal to x squared minus 2, this graph will move 2 units down. So the whole graph of y is equal to x squared will move 2 units down. Let's look at the, the three graphs together on the same pair of axes. Once again, the purple graph is y is equal to x squared. The green graph at the top here is x squared plus 5. And we can see that our turning point of 0, 0 has moved up to 0, 5. It's moved 5 units up. And the turning point is now at 0, 5. The blue graph is y is equal to x squared minus 2. In this case, y is equal to x squared has moved 2 units down so that the turning point is now at 0, negative 2. Finally, let, let's look at reflections. You can see here that we have the graph of y is equal to x squared with its turning point at 0, 0 here. Remember, y is equal to x squared is an upright parabola. It is the right way up and it has a minimum turning point. The other graph is the graph of y is equal to negative x squared. You can see that it is almost identical to y is equal to x squared, except it is upside down. This is what we call an inverted parabola. And this time, its turning point is no longer a minimum turning point. It's now a maximum turning point. Because on this graph, the graph is increasing to a turning point, it hits its maximum here, and then it goes to, it decreases again down after that. So sometimes what we say that 
when a is less than zero, in other words, if the number before x squared is negative, the parabola, so is, is positive, the parabola has a minimum turning point. When a, the number before the x squared, is negative, the parabola has a maximum turning point. More importantly, the turning point does not change its location. It's still at zero, zero, except it's just that the parabola has flipped and we say it is a reflection. You can see by looking at the two graphs that y is equal to negative x squared almost looks like it is y is equal to x squared, which has been reflected in a mirror. And that mirror is the x-axis here. So we say here that y is equal to neg negative x squared is a reflection about the x-axis of y is equal to x squared. In summary, this is the general rule of a quadratic in turning point form. The values of a, h and k will tell you about how the graph is being transformed, whether it is dilated, whether it is, has moved sideways, whether it has moved vertically, and whether it is upside down or upright. Now the value of A tells you how wide or narrow the graph is because A is the dilation factor. The sine of A tells us if the graph is inverted or reflected about the x-axis. If A is negative, it will be inverted. If A is positive, it will be upright. The value of H tells us about the movement of the graph from left to right. This is what we call a horizontal translation. The value of k tells us the movement of the graph up or down. This is what's called a vertical translation. The coordinates of the turning point are always given by the value of h and k. Thank you for listening.